Hey Aquarius, what's going on? Welcome to your September of 2019 astrology and tarot reading. My name is Jai Gabind. This is your channel for grace. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for hitting the notification bell and giving the video a thumbs up. I appreciate that so much, you guys. Thank you for everybody that's been subscribing lately as well. This video is about um, your astrology for September. So there are seven major astrological events that I went over in my September astrological forecast video. Make sure you watch that because it'll give you a lot more details about each of these um, aspects and what the conversations between the planets are. But in this video, I'm going to talk about how these events are going to affect you in your personal life. And then we'll do a tarot reading for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus. So we begin this month with a powerful energy of drive with Sun conjuncting Mars in Virgo, wanting to really get things done, get things moving. This is happening in your eighth house, which is actually an interesting um, combination because the eighth house is it can be about death. So endings and beginnings. Um, it can also be about sex and it can also be about money, like other people's money, inheritance, things, inheritances, things like that. So with this drive, driving force energy to get organized in this house, um, it really points to uh, figuring out what things need to end and what things are you ready to begin. You have to decipher between those two things because also on the third, Mercury comes into the picture and it brings more clarity to this equation. So figure out what am I trying, what do I need to begin? What's ready to end? What do I need to let go of? And what do I need to focus my energy on? And once you, once you find that focus, you will be able to get on, get back on track, get back on the road again. The full moon in Pisces is happening in your second house of um, finances. So the second and eighth houses, they have a relationship together, but the second house is about finances, is about your money. It's about how you're going to make money. And the full moon is this Pisces energy is very emotional loving, caring, very, very sensitive as well. So this full moon is going to bring up a lot for everybody when it comes to an emotional dive. And it's making a lot of um, aspects to many other planets, which I'll go over in that specific video. But uh, for now, just know that you're figuring out it, on top of figuring out what's ending and what's beginning in your life, you're really starting to look at how, you know, money comes at you and your relationship with money and finances in your life. Mercury and, and Venus go into Libra together on the 14th uh, at zero degrees. And that is in your ninth house of spirituality. So it's like, it, you know, these are like levels of movement. Um, I would call them levels of evolution where you go, you know, the endings, the, the endings leave and happen because the new beginnings are coming and you're stepping more into spirituality. So when, um, when, uh, this, this conjunction happens in your four, in your, uh, ninth house of spirituality between, uh, Mercury and Venus and Libra, you're going to feel this desire to, to be in that space, but it will be pulling you towards your communication aspects because of Chiron. Chiron will be opposing this conjunction and we will all feel like we have to deal with the, our wounds of not feeling like we're not good enough. You might feel like you're not on a spiritual path. You might feel like you don't know what spiritual path to take. You might feel a little bit lost. You might feel like you can't, you haven't figured it out yet. And that wound can feel very like deep. It can feel like it's cutting you deep right now because so many people are stepping into spirituality and um, finding kind of their niche or, or finding their, you know, their own truth. And you might feel like you haven't yet found your truth. And that might be really like eating at you. And that's going to come up during this day. So it's about facing your ego fears of like, be, like being able to communicate, communicate what you want, communicate what, what you need, communicate your desire for spirituality and see what that brings for you. The moon will also be conjuncting um, Uranus in your fourth house of the home and also Queen Kong Sing, Mercury in Libra. So this is home and spirituality. But the moon is asking you to feel. The Mercury is asking you to think. And, and Uranus is like, let's spice it up. Let's change it up. Let's think differently and let's feel differently. 
which is kind of a, a comfort zone for you because you already are very different. You already think differently and you already think outside the box. So this is going to be a cool uh, conjunction for you um, and a quincunx for you because it'll it'll bring up like who you are. You're ruled by Uranus or Uranus is ruled by Aquarius or whichever way you want to you want to say it. But Uranus, anytime Uranus makes, you know, any kind of aspect, this is natural for you. It's natural for you to already be thinking outside the box. Think outside the box in your home life. Um, feel feel outside the box. What? How can you feel differently about what your home life is? And how can you think differently about your spiritual path? When Saturn goes direct on the 18th, it's going direct in your 12th house of the subconscious mind, of bliss, your intuition, psychic abilities. And this is like go time, ambition turns on, self-discipline turns on, and determination turns on. And so what this is going to do for you is it's going to want you to really dig deep into the subconscious mind um, and, and just dive in and try to, you know, figure out what, what, what's going to come up, what's going to come of this. How am I going to resolve this, you know, spirituality dilemma in my life? When the Saturn opposes the moon in Cancer on the 22nd, we will feel uh, the pull to come back to reality. For you specifically, you will feel a pull to like, hey, get back to reality. <laughs> like, where did you go? You know, where did you go? So when you feel that, it's going to bring you back to what you need to fi fix, like what needs to get worked on, like what you need to focus on. And that might feel like too much. So we'll feel like giving up. But this is the, the exact test and the moment that the universe is giving you, presenting to you so that you can be like, you know what, I'm not going to give up. I know who I am and I'm not afraid to go dive into my subconscious mind to figure myself out. And I know how to do both at the same time. I know how to be present and I know how to dive into my subconscious mind at the same time. The next day we move into the fall equinox and we the sun moves into Libra and we switch energies and we go into this inward journey of discovery. And then we end the month with uh, a new moon in Libra in your ninth house of spirituality. This is setting intentions and new beginnings for a spiritual path for you. It's going to be really beautiful expression um, for all of the Aquarius sun and Aquarius rising uh, people. So uh, if you have a different rising sign, go check out that rising sign because that might resonate more with you than this, than this astrological forecast for Aquarius Sun it can be very different so um, and also I did the video I don't know if I if I said this already or not but I did a video the September uh, astrological forecast so make sure that you guys check that out as well we're gonna do a little reading for you guys now thank you for being here and watching Thank you, spirit guides, angels, teachers, for being here with us today. Thank you for clearing the energy of the decks and also for clearing my energy so I can be that open channel, clear communication to flow through and these messages to come through to you, my beautiful Aquarius family. We're going to pull some cards, uh, five cards total. These are going to be an intuition card, overall theme, wisdom from the ancestors and... Um, Animal spirits. What's this one that came out? Okay. Oh, wow. You're going to love this. You're going to freaking love this. Let's get the animal card out and then I'll go through what just came out because it's pretty powerful for Aquarius. What animal is going to guide you guys? Ooh, interesting. The scorpion. Okay. So we start this reading with the three of cups. Three of cups is like celebration, but it's also like it's friendships. It's social life. It's letting yourself like be with friends. Interestingly enough, the 11th house of friendship is naturally ruled by the sign of Aquarius. So this is your home. This is feeling very home for you. This is feeling very comfortable for you. Um, because you, you, you feel this connection to this social life and having lots of friends and listening to a lot of people talk and share details about their lives. So this is, this is what this month will feel like very much. 
you get the um, four of wands. Now this one is definitely celebration. This could even be marriage. Uh, those of you that are, you know, you might be in that space. What I'm feeling though is it's like, it's a marriage. It's a marriage between like your spirituality and yourself. It's a marriage between you being here in the present and also being able to like be way out there discovering new truths and finding new things finding out new things because of the uranus aspect and the you know the aquarian energy um and it's a it's a it's a time to really like be excited it's a time to really be excited this month is going to be really fun like how fun is that right social life and full embodiment of celebration of who you are we are moving, you know, into the Aquarian age. Um, there's like a transitional period, but you kind of represent that energy and that's di being different. And it's really beautiful um, what's coming for you this September. Check this out. The overall theme is the star. This is you. You are the star. This is like being in the stars. You see that the Aquarius sign right here? Well, the star is the the Aquarian energy, and it's it's the pouring of of the water. It's the releasing of. It's like coming into fruition, the 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 termination or the culmination of the age of Pisces, with the water being because the you're the water bearer, okay, and you and the star card, you like you release the water, you let the water flow. So this is like Pisces, the age of Pisces, like coming to a completion. And then you fully like harnessing it and understanding it and, and processing it. And then like you letting the waters flow because you are the water bearer. It's really, it's so, such a beautiful combination. Um, and this is about your hopes. So be hopeful. This is beautiful things coming your way. You're going to be, you know, victory, stepping into victory. The six of wands. <laughs> this is like, yes, I did it. You know, I did it. The Scorpio, the Scorpion, I keep wanting to say Scorpio, but it's actually Scorpion, is about uh, being really passionate, being really passionate. Also being a little bit com competitive, um, sometimes tending towards isolation. <laughs> That's so Aquarius. The Scorpion is a passionate and determined creature. Their career is very important to them, as are a few select friends. Sometimes the scorpion's heat festers and they focus on an unresolved event from the past, usually a situation where they were felt where they were left feeling burned. The scorpion card says it's time to clean come clean about your feelings so everyone can heal and you can get back to your usually fiery but fun self. Yep. Like heal it, clear it. There is clearing going on this month so you can get back to like <laughs> this epicness. <laughs> Friendship, celebration, marriage, hopes, dreams, the star, and victory. Whoa, I'm excited for Aquarius now. <laughs> victory! Love you guys. Have an awesome uh, rest of your month. Let me know in the comments if this resonated with you. And I will see you again next month for your October astrology and tarot. Satnam.